Section 2.6 is about Cisco Wireless Architectures and AP Modes. Let's start first with understanding wireless LANs. Wireless Local Area Networks is based on the IEEE 802.11 standard and is a wireless computer network that connects devices in a limited area like a home, office, or school using radio waves instead of physical cables. A central device called an access point manages access to the group and settings of all devices. In the 802.11 standard, this type of network is called Basic Service Set or BSS. Basic Service Set is the fundamental building block of a WLAN and refers to a group of wireless devices that communicate with each other through a single access point. Inside a BSS, all devices communicate through the access point, which ensures data is transmitted properly using the same frequency spectrum, modulation, channel, and so on. BSS is identified by a unique BSS ID or the Basic Service Set Identifier, which is typically the MAC address of the access point's radio interface. This is how BSS works. First, the access point broadcasts its SSID and BSSID to make the network discoverable. Wireless devices scan for available networks and attempt to connect to the desired BSS. Before joining the BSS, a device must request permission from the access point and this process is called association. Once connected, the device becomes a client also known as 802.11 station or STA and devices communicate with each other through the access point. Let's now discuss and understand how wireless networks are architected in Cisco environments. There are different wireless architectures and each architecture has its advantages and is chosen based on factors like network size, management needs, and budget. Let's get started with Autonomous Architecture. Autonomous access point architecture in wireless networking means each access point functions independently as a standalone device that provides a fully functional wireless network. An autonomous access point can also broadcast and support multiple logical wireless networks Multiple SSIDs and each SSID can then be mapped to a different VLAN so different users can connect to different segments of the wired network. Here are the key characteristics of autonomous architecture. First is standalone operation. Each access point acts as an independent entity making its own decisions regarding wireless clients and network connectivity. Access points are configured and maintained separately, with parameters like SSID and wireless settings, and they are configured one by one. Here are the advantages of autonomous architecture. First is simple deployment. There is no need for a separate wireless controller, and it simplifies the initial setup. Next is independence. Each access point operates on its own, meaning the failure of one access point doesn't impact others. Another advantage is cost-effective for small deployments. It works well for small networks because there is no need for expensive wireless controllers and subscriptions for centralized management solutions. Autonomous architecture also has disadvantages. Let's now talk about the inefficiency of autonomous architecture. First is no centralized management. Since each access point operates independently, they must be configured one by one. If an admin wants to change the SSIDs and other setup, they have to be manually configured. Imagine managing hundreds of access point and doing manual process. It can be cumbersome and complex. If they need to change SSIDs, they have to do it on all the access points. Next inefficiency is scalability challenges. Managing a large number of individual access points can be complex and time consuming. It requires more manual configuration and maintenance compared to controller based architectures. 
Next type of architecture is the lightweight AP architecture. A lightweight access point architecture relies on a centralized wireless LAN controller or WLC to manage and configure access points, making them lightweight because they lack autonomous functionality. To address the scaling limitations of the autonomous AP architecture, centralized management controller was introduced. In this architecture, it separates the control and data planes of a wireless network with the access point handling real-time data transmission and the wireless LAN controller managing control plane functions. The wireless controller now pushes the configuration and security policies, client authentication and management, making the access point fully dependent on it. Here are the benefits of separating control and data planes. First, instead of configuring each APs individually, network admins can manage multiple APs through a single WLC, simplifying configuration and troubleshooting. Next is scalability. Any new lightweight AP automatically connects to the WLC and starts operating without manual setup. This makes large-scale deployments much faster and more efficient. And another benefit is improved security. The controller enforces security policies including authentication, encryption, and rogue AP detection, ensuring consistent security across the entire wireless network. Let's now break down the different components of a lightweight AP architecture. First is the lightweight access point. A lightweight access point or LAP is a type of wireless access point that relies on a central wireless LAN controller for its configuration, management, and control functions. They are deployed with a zero-touch approach where they automatically discover and join a WLC, downloading their configuration from the controller. You might be wondering whether autonomous AP and lightweight AP are the same hardware devices. They may share the same underlying hardware, but they run different firmware depending on their mode of operation. The autonomous AP comes with fully functional firmware that has all control capabilities. On the other hand, a lightweight AP has minimal firmware that allows the AP to boot up, obtain an IP address, and communicate with a WLC to download the latest controller-based firmware. APs and LAPs have different part numbers so that people can differentiate between the two during the ordering process. Autonomous APs use part numbers beginning with AIR-AP. While lightweight APs, also known as LAP or CAP, begin with AIR-LAP. Another component of the lightweight AP architecture is the wireless LAN controller or WLC. The wireless LAN controller is a separate physical appliance that centrally manages and controls multiple lightweight access points in a network, streamlining configuration, security, and performance. Cisco has several different WLC models and the latest generation of controllers are the Catalyst 9800 series controllers that run on iOS XE. The wireless LAN controller solves many of the scaling problems seen in the traditional autonomous WLAN architecture like automatic channel selection, fast client roaming, load balancing, RF monitoring, security management, and more. WLCs handle tasks like roaming, radio resource management, and act as termination points for CAPWAP tunnels. What is CAPWAP? CAPWAP or Control and Provisioning of Wireless Access Points Tunnels are secure, dedicated connections established between access points and wireless LAN controllers and enterprise wireless networks. This is how CAPWAP works. First is Discovery and Association. An access point discovers a WLC through a discovery process and establishes a CAPWAP tunnel with it. Next is Control Plane Connection. Since control and data planes are separated, CAPWAP creates not one, but two tunnels. A 
control plane connection is established, allowing the WLC to send configuration and management commands to the access point. These messages are encrypted to ensure secure communication. Then, the data plane connection. The data plane connection allows the access point to forward client traffic to the WLC, which then processes and forwards it to the wired network. By default, data is not encrypted, but encryption can be enabled using Datagram Transfer Layer Security or DTLS. Now, let's see the traffic pattern through the CapWeb tunnel. The lightweight access point sends the client's traffic to the WLC by default. Then, the controller is responsible for bridging the client's traffic into the wired network.